and we'll carry on and now base the yes you've probably seen it's just a case of going through each package and following the instructions so it's fairly straightforward I say the only bit that doesn't or isn't straightforward is when we encounter errors so we'll see how we go commands up because I think this is quite a quick package to build That's all done. It's a really quick one. That's set done. That's package config pipe done, so let's tidy that up and move on to any cases.
that Zen curse is done, and we'll do shadow now. So we're not going to use crack group, so we can ignore that note, but if you wish to, then you'd have to veer off to the CBLFS book to um, install it that way. So I'm just configuring shadow here and we're going to set a password for roots. This is the password that will be used when um, you log into the new system when it's up and running as root. So that's your tools done. So let's do properly. Yes, I think this is a quick one. No, when using the boot method, two tests will fail if the host name is not set. If you're booting to the temporary system, so we haven't, so we don't need to do that. And we're not testing anyway, so I'll just jump down to install.
So E2FS, another one of these ones that's got me built in a separate build directory. Okay, all done. So let's move to core utils. Remember to go back up two directories on this one. They've put the build underneath the package directory, like the modern LFS does. So we only need to delete the single directory for that one. Utils, and we can configure. So we're not testing, so we we'll skip all these commands and go straight down to the make install. Okay, so that's finished core utils. Let's 
So the next one's probably the shortest compile. It's probably the smallest package. So I've got a patch to put in. And we'll make... Let's see if I can recall this. install. So that's done. So a very simple configure, make and make install for this one. Oh, right, what did I do there? Okay, right, I didn't type in 2 ampersand, so it put make into the background to run. Um, and it means I think the install wouldn't have run, so... Yep, that looks better. So now we've got IP root. And let's install that, it's finished. So, bz. Do GTBM.
Okay, let's clear that one up. And move on to Pearl. So if you remember when we started this section, we built Pearl, but we installed it into the tools directory because, um, as the book said, there are issues with building Pearl in, in the cross-compile part. So now we're building the real Pearl that will be used in the final installation. So the destination won't be the tools directory, it will be the user directory as you can see there. So the note again saying if we're using the boot method we need to do another command so we, we don't do that because we're obviously in the shroot environment. Okay, so now we can build it. And now we can install the program. Well done. So now we're doing red line. It's now done.
So auto conf. Quick one, we can remove that and go on to auto make. Another quickie, so I can remove that. And we do bash now. So that's installed, let's make a symlink. Sorry. Move the binary and reload the bash binary to the new one that we just built. So BC. That's done. So apart from the testing, um, oh, in fact this is set to DOS and configure so I can't do all the commands as one.
course, I didn't put in. Thought I pasted that command in, and obviously I haven't. So what I do here, if I made a mistake, just delete it and start afresh. It's the safest thing to do. So I've deleted the directory with the errors in that I made, and just start from the beginning again. It's better, so I can run that set in now. Now I can build and install it. That's done. So, file is the next package. is pretty standard build so let's look for that command which is that one prefix equals user make install Gork. complete. So the next package now is find utils.
Okay, all done. So, move that and we move on to get text.
Okay, that's complete, so let's tidy that up. And move on to grep. So we're going to configure, in fact it looks like a usual install, so let's just recall the command, oh, ok the user, the binder, sorry, is slightly different, so let's just stick that bit in. and paste it to ensure there's no mistakes in the path. done. And we'll move on to Groff. Now Groff is one of the packages I had problems with. Um, it compiled okay, but I found when I came to compile MANDB that wouldn't compile successfully um, because of it couldn't find I think a header or library, I can't remember which it was, um, to do with Groff. And I found it was because I was compiling with um, parallel processes for make. So basically the um, environment variable we've set for make, um, that make flags one, that was interfering or if you if, if you were to build this by hand with make minus j whatever um, like I said although it builds okay it causes problems further down the line and I actually subsequently found out I was reading the um, Linux from scratch manual and in there under chapter 6 for Groff it actually um, the command they actually give to compile is make minus j1 so there's maybe you know, if somebody's maintaining this, this would probably be a good um, kind of bug report for the the book to point out that make should say make, make minus J1 here. So, um, with that in mind, I'm going to make sure that I compile it with that minus J1 just so that when we come to do MANDB, it, it will compile successfully. Um, as in the normal... Linux from scratch book. Um, you have to choose um, a page size here. So in the US, you like to choose letter as the parameter for this uh, variable page. Um, in Europe, and it's, indeed, it says elsewhere. Um, I don't know if there's anywhere else in the world that uses another different standard size page, but certainly in the UK, standard size pages called A4. So, ensure that's set. So, let's do the configure first. All right, okay, helps if I go into the directory we're going to build. Uh, 
Let me call that command so you go. I believe, I'm not sure if it's in the LFS book or it's in the readme. Um, it tells you how you can set that page variable, the default page, after you've created Groff. Um, so I think you can build this without defining that that page variable. Um, and Groff will obviously be built without a default page size, but there is a way of setting that or changing it once it's been compiled and installed. So if you're unsure, especially as as I say, we recommend that I recommend that this cross compiles is a purely temporary thing. Um, you could, in theory, compile this without that page variable, and if you did need it, you could set it later. So now let's make and remembering to use J1 to turn off the cap parallel compile. Okay, so that has finished building. So just to be sure, I'm I'm going to install run the make install command with minus j12 just to be doubly sure. So there's no problems going to be caused by the parallel make. <coughs> okay, that's all done. We move on to less. That's a nice quick one. So I'm going to do gzip. So that configure looks familiar. Configure prefix equals user bin uh, equals bin install yep that's good
Okay. So just a couple of files to be moved. Or a few files rather, and that's done. So for IP utils we've got a patch to start off with and then we just straight away compile it and install the programs. That was a really short one. And move on to KBD. So that's that one out of the way. So lip pipeline next. Okay, so now we're going to MANDB and i so say we shouldn't have any problems with this now because um, we've built Groff with just a single process at a time. Single job rather.
Okay, so there's information there about um, using man pages in other languages, so you may need to um, you know, do some uh, extra configuration there to get your language working for man pages. <laughs> So now we build make. So it's a, quite a routine. Okay, I've got a bit more in the history now. It's quite a routine build, so let's grab one of these ones here. So we'll configure prefix equals user make and make install. So XZ utils. Notice the title of this of called XZ utils will in fact the um, the software package is just called XZ with the version number. So just in case you're looking for xz-utils-5.2.3 it's just xz-5.23 so let's start by compiling this oh sorry configuring and then we shall compile it So K mod now. As you remember, there's two patch files, or two files that start with patch. The one with the large number is the kernel patch file, patch set. So you can see 275 is the one we want, patch 275. So it's a normal, basic, standard build sequence here.
and sew it onto PS Miss. So again, this is a standard compile and build. Just got a couple of files to move at the end. So there's a couple of packages we're now going to build um, and one of these for certain, I'm not sure about the other one but at least one of these, I can't remember if it's this libestr or the next one libee is not maintained anymore and the, re the reason why they're here it's for a subsequent package, yes our syslog this version of rsyslog depends on both of these I believe as I remember when I was reading about these and um, the newer versions of rsyslog don't use this particular one of these particular packages and it's not being maintained anymore because there's the author says on his page that he's not aware that there's any any other package that has a need for it so um, it's another reason why this um, CLFS manual is now out of date um, if you were to do it with newer packages which is something that I did start doing and it did seem to be working um, you could build it with the latest packages the problem you've got is some of these packages are out of date and not available so if, if for example the latest version of Arsys log didn't work with the later versions of all the other packages that we're installing you'd have to go back to a version you'd need these old older support libraries for this version of Arsys log and you're, you're potentially putting yourself at risk with security issues so it's another reason why I wouldn't rely on on using this build as we're building as, as um, something to use in the service or, or in a real life environment um, as I say my recommendation would be to build the latest Linux from scratch on top of this if, if you did want to actually utilize what, what we're doing here but but for our purposes to, to get the cross compile finished it's it's okay so we've got a standard compile again compile sequence so the prefix that we use and make and make install. So let's run that. Okay. So now we do libby. So again. Did I miss something out on that last one? No, it was. Uh, again, we've got a um, standard build, but it does say Libby will fail to compile with multiple jobs with make, so we've got to put J1 on, on the end of this one. So let's recall the command and just stick minus J1 there. log so it looks like these instructions are quite standard so let's recall the one with the parallel make so I did start testing this with the latest versions I was um, cross-referencing with the latest version of Linux from scratch and um, and these instructions and it was going quite well. I, I thought, well, this is a bit, bit untested and um, a bit experimental. So I decided I, I was going to do the video on that, but it was 
as I say, it's a bit um, a bit of an unknown, really. And I thought it it's getting quite complicated switching backwards and forwards between the two books. So I decided then just to revert to this, but like I said, with the caveat that this is uh, quite out of date. This installation, but it's certainly something you may like to try. And as I say, if if this RSYS log did cause a problem, there's um, yeah, maybe substitute packages to um, put in its place where you wouldn't need RSYS log or the two libraries previously that it depends on. Uh, yep. So now we're doing sysv in it. and then a couple of makes and install it so create a new init tab and it says then this next lot this next command adds standard virtual terminals to init tab. If your system only has serial console, skip the following command. So it's up to you. I mean, I, I stuck these in when I was testing because normally the sys init, uh, sorry, the init tab does have quite a bit of information in it, so it's unlikely to be connecting with a serial console, but you can stick it in. And again, um, there's all these other bits you can add in. It doesn't matter, it'll still work. And this last bit is just to add a terminating comment, so this is the end of the end of the uh, init tab file. Alright, so that's that all done. So now we're going to build tar. So now we do tax info. So at the start of this is a standard build commands.
Okay, let's do So now we move on to EU dev. Right, now um, I had this failure when I was testing. Um, I couldn't find what the problem was really, but um, I did find a workaround with it. So what I'm going to do first is to remove the package source, um, extract it again, and then if we go in there just make one change to one of the source files so the source file we need to change we do vi we've got vi here we have yeah this is <laughs> funnily enough i said we don't need vi but this is where vi has come in handy could alternatively use it in outside the true environment if we hadn't installed it so if you've gone by the book and you know decided you don't need vi um when you've gone through the book and you decided yeah, there's no point like I suggested it wouldn't be then just get another tab up and use the system vi on um, MNT CLFS sources EU dev and then the following um, directory and file that I'll, I'll show you but yeah we have actually built it so it just makes it a little bit more convenient uh, despite what I said previously so we want to edit the file that's in the source directory and then MTD underscore probe so I'll tab that there it is there and then a file called mtd underscore probe dot c and then what we need to do is bring the cursor down to um, line 24 and type a sorry no big pardon put it on line 23 type i and press enter just to insert a blank line and then here you want to um, put in a statement similar to the ones below where we are now called hash include space less than and then std int dot h and then greater than and um, what, what's happening here as, as I understood it, um, there's some functions, I think they are, um, that are loaded from one of these header files um, that aren't compatible with something. I don't know what, I don't, I don't understand C at all. But apparently by loading this header file before these other ones, the function that's loaded by one of these is loaded by this header and that takes precedence only over any other include files as I and as I understood the fix. So if we save that with X um, in fact if I go back it might make more sense if we look at the error. Yeah see the error is it is this unknown type uint thirty two. So by in adding that um, include command for standard int it defines this type so then this error doesn't occur and where well maybe, maybe that definition doesn't exist in any other files and that's why it's fixed but as I understood it when I read about this error it seemed to point out that it overrode um, other definitions in fact I, I also do remember I added that include at the end of the other includes in that file and it didn't fix the problem as if it was um, 
it did need to override other definitions. So as long as you put it at the top there, this will fix the problem. If you put it anywhere else, well, especially down the bottom where I tried it first time round, it won't work. So safe to put that line we just inserted at the top of those includes and, and the compile will then work. So now let's redo the configure. Now the make will run right through. Well, I think that's past the point. Yes, it has, yeah. And so now we can install that. Um, arguably, I suppose we should do run make check. I didn't run this before, but let's just run it and see what happens. See how happy it is. Um, in theory, it should be okay. Um, just because it's compiled successfully doesn't mean it actually works com properly. But yeah, it looks like that's worked okay. It looks like a pretty basic test, but that looks good. So we'll carry on. So now we do util Linux. Oh yes, missing a function. So now we reinstall Vim. As before, just noticed that the package is Vim 8.0.tar, but the file that's extracted is Vim 8.0. Just a slight difference there. So patch it, make some changes to the configure, and can we do a. Okay, the install's got to be done with one job, so let's recall our standard command. 
Prefix calls user make and it's just the install that's got to be done with J1. Just create a configuration file and it says about an option there if you want to change some of the options. Let's give an explanation of what's going on. So grub now because I'm gonna be booting this from a machine that is already working. Um, and already has the operating system in and so on. Um, although I'll be building Grub, I won't actually be setting up Grub in a short while when we yeah, make the system bootable. Because um, I'll be using the existing bootloader that's on there to boot the image. And also this obviously is in a virtual machine. So I need to get these files from the virtual machine onto the real machine just so that I can... Um, get a video of, of what we've made um, to show show it's actually running so like I say I'll, I'll install it but I won't be making any use of the software that I build at the moment Okay, let's grub finished. So it looks like we've come virtually to the end of the compiling, just really system configuration. Um, let's talk about debugging symbols in, stripping them. So let's log out. 
And we've got a different troop command here, so I'm going to recall the previous one and just visually inspect what the changes are. So we've got tools bin n minus i, term equals root, term equals the current term, ps1, where our make flags will keep. So this is the bit that's probably different. Path equals bin, user bin, s bin, user s bin, and then there's no tools bin, which makes sense. We, we now don't want to rely on any programs searching the tools bin directory. And then we're still running the bash in tools, and we log in without the plus h. So let's run that. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm going to I should have done this before really well while I've just been compiling all these packages. I should have put something like in like that to warn, warn us that we're in the truth. Um So then we can run this command to strip the binaries and libraries just to reduce the size and you probably don't want to do this if you're, well, it depends what the target system is. I'm doing it because it's 486. This size is not very big. Um, and also, I'm planning on transferring these files using rsync, so it reduces the amount of data that's got to be transferred over the network. Um, I think the network card's not particularly fast, when certainly not um, giga ethernet. Um, I can't remember what, what speed it is now. But it's not particularly fast, so it'll just make make it a little bit less time to transfer. The, and uh, like I say, the disk space is an issue as well. I've only got two gigabytes um, partition. Uh, so then it says we can do a strip all as well, but only on the binaries. So you don't gain much more by doing this uh, most of the space you save with this first command we did but we can run this on as you as you see it says to do it on the user bin and s bin so we need to remove this lib and we need to change this to strip all so the important is if you do the strip all make sure you haven't got lib in there because as it says don't use this option on libraries They'll be destroyed. Don't look like there's a lot that's changed there. A lot of them says file format not recognised. So. 